What's up guys? Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com. So in today's video, we're continuing our series on 30 days to model in SketchUp by modeling wood trim, specifically base, crown molding, and window trim. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, and so when we talk about wood trim, it's important to know that wood trim in general is just a piece of wood that's had a router or something run along it in order to create a different profile. So like this piece of wood base from the Home Depot, for example, was just a flat piece of wood. And then they've just taken a router along the outside of this um, in order to generate this piece. Well, what we're gonna do is we're basically gonna use this profile in order to add this wood trim to our model. So I'm gonna start by using my snipping tool and just creating a copy of this image. And so I'm just gonna copy this image and I'm gonna save it and I'm gonna import it into SketchUp. And so I'm just gonna click on the little hamburger menu right here and do an import from my device. I'm gonna find that image and I'm gonna bring it in. And we're gonna bring this in as an image. And in this case, what we wanna do is we wanna bring this in and we want to scale it, right? Because we're using this in order to draw this to scale. Well, we know based on this image that this is going to be 9 16 of an inch thick by five and a quarter inches high. And so we're just gonna use that five and a quarter inches high in order to set this up. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on this and I'm gonna explode this. And then I'm going to make it a group. That way I can double click inside of it and edit it. And I know that my height is going to be five and a quarter inches high so I can use my tape measure tool. So I'm gonna tap control key so I'm not in create guide mode. And then I'm just going to measure this distance right here I'm gonna click and then I'm gonna type in 5.25 and hit the enter key. What that's gonna do is that's gonna resize this component so that that image is now five and a quarter inches high. So see how it got a lot smaller? Well now what I can do is I can just draw on top of this in order to get my profile. So I'm just gonna draw right here. And so now I have a profile for my base, right? And so what I'm gonna do is most of the time I'll make a copy of my profile using the move tool. So I'll just tap the M key, single click on this and tap the control key to make a copy. But I'm gonna bring this copy over and I'm going to align it using the rotate tool. So tap Q, and then you can tap the right arrow key to lock this to the red axis. I'm gonna rotate this so that it's standing up. So I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees. Well then, I'm gonna take this base piece and I'm gonna move it so that it aligns with the corner of my room right here. Well now, instead of coming in here and trying to push pull this whole thing, right? We don't really want to do that. What we want to do instead is we want to extrude this along this path right here because we want it to go all the way around our building. And so what I want to do is I just want to come in here and do a shift click and select the path all the way around the building. And then I want to activate the follow me tool. So the follow me tool is if you click on the push pull, and click right here, that's going to be active. And then I'm just gonna click on my profile. And notice how this lost the selection. So we're just gonna have to go back in here and get the selection again. Um, we lost the selection when we had to click in there and select the tool. So we're just gonna reselect this. Activate the follow me tool by clicking on this and then click on this object right here. And what that does is notice how this basically extrudes this all the way along the surface right here. And so one thing to note about that is when we did this, it kind of wiped out the wall on the back side in there. So you might need to just draw across the surface right here in order to heal that. And then on this back side, you may have to draw a line all the way down. So sometimes the follow me tool can act a little bit funky and honestly, it might not even matter depending on what you're trying to do because it's on the back side of your wall. But what that did is that gave us this nice piece of trim inside of our model right here, right? And so one thing I didn't like about the way this happened though is this is now in here along with um, my other geometry. So it's all kind of merged. So now if I move things around, it's all like, sticky and it's going to mess everything up. So let's look at a way to add the, let's look at a way to add the profile without having it merge with the rest of the geometry in your model. So first off, I'm going to go grab a crown molding profile and I'm going to import that. And one thing you might want to think about doing is you might want to think about drawing this big inside of this group. So I'm going to right click, explode, 
right click and make group. You might want to think about making this bigger and then scaling it down once you've drawn the geometry. And the reason for that is because when you draw this small, um, when you draw it actually to scale, SketchUp can sometimes have trouble with the number of segments that are in here. But if we draw this big and then scale it down, then SketchUp doesn't have any issues with the number of segments anymore. So that's just something to think about. I'm just going to make a copy of this and move it over. And we're just going to use the tape measure tool in order to scale this one. And so this one is going to be six and an eighth inch tall. So we're just going to go from this upper point to this lower point with the tape measure tool. We're just going to measure it and then type in six and one eighth, hit the enter key. And we actually don't want to do that. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it in a group. Then I'm going to double click in the group. Use the tape measure tool in order to resize this, just like this. And so notice how this time, this piece of base, or in this case, it's actually crown molding, is in a group where previously we just had it in there as raw geometry. Well, we're still going to take this and place it. So I'll start right here, then remove it down, and we're going to rotate it using the rotate tool so that this is aligned. Then I can just move this up like this so that it aligns with the top of my space. So I've got a profile in here that I want to extrude along this space, but it's different in that this time it's in a group. So for the group, I'm just going to select this whole thing. So activate your tool first. So we're going to click on the follow me tool and then I'm going to right click and click on edit group, that's going to put me in this group. And then when I click, it's still going to follow along this path that we had selected right here. So you can select the path, activate follow me, right click on your group and click edit group and then click on this face. Well, the cool thing about this is this got put in here as a group, right? I don't have to worry about it anymore merging with my geometry because it's in here grouped separately from my wall geometry. And so you would do the same thing with a window opening where you would draw out the profile and then add the trim. And so first off, the base is going to be a little bit different, right? It's just gonna have a simple profile that comes out like this. And so for the sill piece right here, you would just extrude this across very simply. I'd probably wanna go ahead and put that in a group and so for my window, I'm going to import a window casing image. All right, and then we'll take this group. We'll set it to the size that we want using the tape measure tool. And then we're just going to move this over. Is I want a path that runs this way. So I'm just going to select it, activate the follow me tool, and I'm just going to extrude it across like this. And I may have this in upside down, so I'm just going to scale it about center like this. And then I actually want that profile again. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to double click in this group and select that end face. And I'm just gonna do a control C and a control V right here so that I have this. And then I'll move this back against the wall. We'll go ahead and put this in a group and we'll use the rotate tool to lay this down against the wall. And I'm gonna go ahead and we'll leave a little gap here that we can fix in a second. But what I want to do is I want to move this over and then I want to add to this profile a piece that's going to go right here. That way when we extrude it up, it's going to look something like this. And so then we just want to do the same thing. Where we select this path, activate follow me, edit this group, and then add this trim just like this. And so in this situation, probably what I'm going to do is I'm just going to extend this piece out 
right here. And this may not be perfect window trim, by the way. We may have a little bit of a gap in here, but we're gonna call it good. You understand the concept of what we're trying to do here. We might even take this bottom piece and select the end geometry and we can move it over on the green axis in order to make it align with this end since we drew it a little short. All right, so if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. I will link to the next video in this series as soon as it's ready to go. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.